Now then, time for our next guest. We've heard over many years now how soldiers returning from war zones and military service have experienced PTSD. One man here in Norfolk has made it his job to step in and help using the thing he knows best, which is acupuncture. His name is Najee Malak, and this Friday, the charity he founded, which is called Stand Easy, is receiving £10,000 to help continue his work. And let's say hello to Najee. Hello, Najee. Oh, hello, Rob. Hi. Great to have you with us. Um, Thank before- you. Before, we're going to talk about the, the brilliant um, the money that you're receiving, which is fantastic, a bit later. But first of all, just to, for people who don't know, explain to us what PTSD is. Well, PTSD is post-traumatic stress syndrome uh, or disorder. And it's, it's really, in layman terms, it's like shock. Okay? So you have people or veterans, because that's our speciality, who develop PTSD as a result of something happening on the battlefield, like suddenly a landmine exploding or one of their mates dying in front of them, and they develop such a powerful shock that the body cannot handle it. And then they develop symptoms like anxiety, depression, nightmares, if it's bad, suicidal thoughts, hypervigilance, anger, frustration. Sometimes it doesn't happen straight away. Sometimes they the body, the mind can tolerate it. And then they come maybe um, in a few years' time to civil life, civilian life, and another trauma happens, whether it's a separation or an accident or some kind of thing that disturbs them, and everything, all hell breaks loose. So they develop PTSD. So it can be either instantaneous as a result of some trauma or it can happen later in life. Yeah, and and obviously you know you're talking about war zones and military people people who've been on military service, but also it can happen in in kind of in inverted commas normal life as well. If if someone witnesses a, an accident Absolutely. or something like Absolutely. that, so I mean it's, civilians experience it, military people experience it, anybody can experience it. The 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 thing that brought it into the public domain, if you like, in the recent years, it was the military because. So many of our uh, veterans and soldiers were experienced trauma as a result of um, conflicts that happened in the last 40 years, really. And, and that's mean, what... it, it has been identified in the First World War as a result of shell shock. Yes, yeah. The Germans had very powerful uh, shells, and British soldiers were shocked as a result of the sound and the intensity. And it was identified as shell shock, and it is shock. Mm. And, and luckily now we understand it better yeah. and, and we can we can treat people correctly. Now, you, you first got involved in this in your home country, Lebanon. Um, obviously, there, there is lots going on there. We'll talk about that a little bit later because there's been some breaking news this evening as well there. But there, sure. obviously, there, the, the, during the civil war there was when you were involved. What, tell us about that. What were you doing? Well, we, we, we had to do our national service and then uh, all hell broke loose. The civil war started and a lot of us had to join militias in order to protect our communities and our neighborhoods. So after a couple of years, I, I sort of had enough of, of the war and the civil war in Lebanon because I wasn't able really to do apart from somehow you have to either get involved or, or get out of there. So I came to England and studied acupuncture. And the, the, the sort of acupuncture I studied um, was able to identify things like shock and trauma and stuff. So I started going back during the civil war uh, and around 86, 87, and treating a lot of people, the civilians, uh, people who were involved in the war, and also prisoners of war, because Lebanon was occupied at the time. Israel occupied Lebanon between 82 and 90. So we had prisoners of war, so knew, people knew what I was doing. And um, they were all suffering with shock. Uh, doesn't matter who they were. Uh, we, we, we developed, slowly, slowly developed a very simple, quick procedure to treat shock. And this is what uh, prompted us to start the charity after we realized that veterans were waiting for three to six months to get a diagnosis or to get a sitting with a counselor or to get diagnosed by the GP or psychiatrist. And it's too long. Yeah. Three to six months is too long. If you're drowning, you know, you don't want somebody to say, hey, uh, I'll come and see you in a few weeks, you know, see how you, you're doing. You want yeah, you're right. You need, you need action uh, straight away, yeah. Attention, and we have taken on, on, upon us to see veterans within a week. So, you know, it's, it's been now five years, and we've seen around the 250 veterans, and 
by the grace of God, they're all doing amazing. And we had a research, we, which we mentioned on your BBC before, with Norfolk Health Watch, uh, headed by Ed, Edward Fraser, with 21 veterans suffering from very severe PTSD, and we had 100% success. Yeah, that's fantastic. So, so how come you? How did you manage to to find your way to Norfolk? Tell us about that. Women. <laughs> <laughs> Fair My enough. My wife came from from Norfolk, and uh, I moved to Norfolk, and I loved it. It's been 25 years, and the last five years have been really special working with the military and veterans. And now we've been working with the City of London Police, with PFOA Police Firearms. And Norfolk Constabulary recently, Fire Brigade in Bedfordshire. And we get referrals from doctors, psychiatrists, hospitals. Um, so, and it's, it's the veterans. We don't have any marketing budget. It's the veterans who talk about their experience with us. And uh, they're amazing people, you know. And well, I was going to ask you. health is not a very good stigma. No, I was going to ask about that. Written in the file. Do you think it's hard? Them, is it hard for them to, to talk to talk about it and admit they're struggling? Would you say? Exactly, and you know when you're struggling, you really don't want somebody to to keep talking about your struggle. And when you're broken and you're in pieces inside, you don't want somebody to ask you, "Well, tell me more about it. Tell me more about it." You know, there's an old saying saying you don't find the light by talking about darkness. And when they come to us, we say. You know, they mention what 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 they're suffering from and um, how this and and we ask them, you know, where would you like to go? We don't ask them where you've been and how, you know how did you get traumatized. If they wish to talk, they can talk. If they don't wish to talk, they don't have to talk. We can still treat them and get them better. And and is it just acupuncture you use, or are there other methods? Or you know, That's tell us a bit about how that works. Yeah. And okay. usually, people and veterans who live far away come for three sessions. And that's enough to get them started on a on a hopefully new kind of energy, new yeah. way of new outlook. And uh, you know, there is definitely a very very good change in in the symptoms like anxiety, depression, suicidal thoughts. They really decrease dramatically. I mean, it's incredible. Acupuncture is an incredible thing. Um, you know, for for someone myself, never never had it, never been treated with it. You know, if you if you're scared of needles, I know that's probably a thing that would that would jump up. I guess you would say, well, don't worry, it doesn't hurt. There's nothing like that. Is that correct? <laughs> yes, but I mean, if you're struggling between life and death, what is a few needles? Huh? Fair enough. Yeah. No, I you're right. Lot, to be honest, a lot of sympathy. If, you know, if it hurts a little bit, and you're really. Uh, on, on life and death kind of border, you know, you, 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 you're not going to worry too much about tiny, they're very tiny needles. Yeah. They hardly hurt. I mean, we do them on children and babies and stuff. So it's, that's, not, that's not an issue really at all. It's an it's an amazing thing. It really is, and it's obviously been proven to work and what have you, and and do great stuff. Now, and you and in in that vein, you've been recognised for your work you've done, and you've got an award of ten thousand pounds, which is incredible. Tell us how that came about. Well, it's the Veterans Foundation. You know what the Veterans Foundation is a is a big charitable organisation set up by uh, veterans and other people to help small charities that look after veterans their welfare, their well-being, and everything. And usually they help little charities that don't have a huge marketing budget to, to spend. So, you know, we don't have any marketing budget, absolutely zero. Our marketing people are the wonderful veterans who write testimonials, who go on their website, who go on special chats they have with their mates and talk about us. And this is how... We have people coming from all over the country, you know, for the last three years now. We've had people coming from Aberdeen, from Yorkshire, from Southwest, everywhere. We had somebody coming from Northern Ireland last year. So, um, you know, the word, uh, it's, it's the best honest way, really. You know, I don't like to brag about what I do. I'd, I'd rather, you know, the veterans talk about their experience because that's, that's honest and genuine. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. Now, um, we, we we really appreciate you coming on to talk to us, Naji. But let, let's just talk about 
Beirut and what's happening there. And we saw the the awful, awful pictures last week, and sadly, lots of lives have been lost over there. Uh, and today, there, there's been some some happenings over in Lebanon. The, the government have resigned amid the mounting anger over the explosions. Uh, the announcement was made on national TV, um, the, addressed by the Prime Minister Hassan Diab. Um, many people have accused the country's leaders of culpability through their alleged negligence and corruption. And, and there's been lots of protests we've seen out there. Uh, as, as someone who's from Lebanon, what, what, what's your take on the situation over there? Well, obviously, I'm not a politician. I'm not going to discuss politics, but I think they should all be gone soon because uh, they have milked, milked the country. You know, the country doesn't have any more blood. They've taken every ounce of blood and the people have spoken. And I hope that we get international support like it has been shown by Britain, America and France. They want to support the people, not the, the regime, which is completely corrupt. Yeah, and it's, it, I mean, it's so, it, it kind of, the, the pictures are the thing. And I, I don't want to sound like, you know, it's all about Twitter and Instagram or what have you these days. But when, when you see those pictures, I mean, it, it kind of had eerie reminiscence of things like 9-11, when these pictures are kind of being beamed around the world and you see that terrible scene with the, the massive explosion. Um, I guess, you know, that, that, that at least will mean that, that people have taken this seriously. And like you said, that aid will get to Lebanon, hopefully, and, and help people. I hope so. Yeah, that's the main thing. You you know, we've seen these scenes in the civil war. I mean, the whole of Beirut is like this. So it's nothing new. It's the enormity of that single explosion that kind of shook the world, really, that shocked everybody. Yeah. Do do you still, I mean, I'm guessing you still have family over there? or or, Yeah, yeah, I do, but not a lot, you know. But, you know, everybody was affected, obviously. Lebanon, Beirut is a small place. So... Everybody is affected. Yeah, and 